Today we're going to go over all the diuretics you need to know about for nursing school. Hey guys, my name is Will Kirkpatrick. I'm a nursing educator inside the Corsetta platform. And today we're going to go over all the diuretics, such as thiazide diuretics, loop diuretics, and more. So diuretics are mentioned all the time in nursing school, and it's important for us as nursing students to understand the mechanism of action and the contraindications and adverse effects for each one of these drug classes. Now, if you guys haven't heard one of my courses before, we always study pharmacology by drug class because this is the best way to memorize all of these medications and improve the ability to translate it onto a nursing scenario question. So if you guys haven't already, download our pharmacology concept map that is completely free on CorsettaNursing.com. You can download that concept map and write your notes that go directly along with this video. All right, so let's get right into it. So the first preferred diuretic, and this is actually one of the most preferred medications to lower the blood pressure, is thiazide diuretics. Now the common suffix with this medication class actually makes it pretty simple for you. It's a thiazide diuretic, so it ends with thiazide. So one of the most common medications, there's not very many other ones, is hydrochlorothiazide. There's also another medication that is thiazide-like, such as chlorothalidone. So this diuretic is actually pretty unique because it selectively excretes the sodium without increasing the actual excretion of water. So it's not necessarily a thiazide where we think of where you're peeing a lot. This diuretic will actually excrete the sodium. But of course, the excretion of sodium, if you remember in our fluid and electrolytes course, if you haven't gotten to watch that, make sure you guys do, is the process of osmosis. Water will be following sodium wherever it goes because sodium sucks. So when sodium excretes out the kidneys, of course, you're going to have an increased excretion of water volume as well but not as nearly as aggressive as the other diuretics we're about to mention. So it basically, in a way, indirectly causes diuresis without actually directly causing volume loss. Now, what are the contraindications and the adverse effects? So let's first start with adverse effects. So the first one is, of course, hypotension. Because of why? Well, we're decreasing the volume in that vascular space, and it leaves and it gets excreted through the kidneys. So when there's decreased volume, we have a lower blood pressure. So hypotension is one of those adverse effects. Secondly, write this down. This gets questioned about all the time in the nursing exams and the NCLEX is hypokalemia because thiazide diuretics, when you're excreting sodium and water, you're also excreting the potassium leaving through that water. And the last adverse effect you'll want to remember, and it kind of makes thiazide diuretics unique, is that it increases blood sugar. And how it increases blood sugar specifically is that it actually decreases the sensitivity of insulin. So the insulin is not able to transport the glucose into the cell as well when you have thiazide diuretics. So what are the contraindications? Well, the biggest one you wanna know is that this medication should never be given to a patient that is allergic to sulfa. That's just a major contraindication that you'll need to remember. And of course, we just talked about it, hypokalemia. And another one that is kind of specific to thiazide diuretics is gout because thiazide diuretics actually decrease the excretion of uric acid, which is the main player of the development of gout. And the last contraindication is a patient who is being treated with bipolar disorder which a lot of times will take lithium. And lithium is also has a reduced excretion when in conjunction use of thiazide diuretics. All right, so let's talk about loop diuretics. Now these diuretics are one of the most commonly talked about diuretics and commonly used diuretics in the hospital setting. Hey guys, it's Wilker Patrick, nursing educator in Corsetta. I wanted to let you guys know that I will help you with anything you need at any time if you just send me a text at 940-218-4062, 940-218-4062. Four zero six two. Let's get back to the video. So this diuretic is specifically used to remove fluid in a rapid and extensive way. This can also be used for hypertension related to fluid overload, of course. So patients who have heart failure or peripheral edema, loop diuretics are for you. So what is the common suffix? It is semide. So S E M. I D E. So why are they called loop diuretics? Well, we have something called the loop of Henle in the kidneys. And this blocks the sodium resorption and water resorption in that loop of Henle. So it blocks it and it allows the diuresis, so the excretion of sodium and water. So one medication you'll see a lot of the times is furosemide or even torsemide. Now what they love to ask about on these nursing exams and the NCLEX is if you can identify the adverse effects and the contraindications when you give this medication. Of course, with these loop diuretics, they're pretty aggressive. So you're going to have water loss. So hypovolemia is an adverse effect. And then sodium, hyponatremia is an adverse effect. Then the biggest one, of course, is hypokalemia because it spills potassium as well. And then when you have volume loss, you're going to have hypotension. Now, the biggest one you guys want to remember is that this medication, especially if you're given an IV, 
and you push it way too fast, such as a furosemide slash Lasix IV push, if you push it way too fast, you can cause something called autotoxicity. A sign and symptom of autotoxicity is ringing in the ears, so tinnitus. So the contraindications when giving this medication is you typically want to avoid it with patients with renal failure. And you have to play the checks and balances with that because a lot of times we will use it with patients who have acute kidney injury, for example, where the fluid is being retained. So there's a lot of fine line balance with that. And it's also, of course, under the discretion of the physician. But loop diuretics in general should be avoided with someone who has severe renal failure because it can cause even worse renal failure. And of course, we have to look out for electrolyte imbalances. And the most important and prevalent one is hypokalemia. So you want to look out for the arrhythmias. And that's also another adverse effect. So the next one is a potassium sparing diuretic. So this name tells you exactly what it is. It's a diuretic that we like to use when we wanted to actually spare the potassium, unlike loop diuretics that get rid of it very aggressively. So if we have a patient who has a long history um, and maybe doesn't need as aggressive diuresis, then we will use this medication for the patient who has a long history of hypokalemia already. This is typically used in adjunct and not as a sole use. Um, so if there's already a diuretic online, sometimes we'll add a potassium sparing diuretic such as a patient with heart failure, for example, who needs maybe more aggressive diuresis. So the specific mechanism of action of this is it blocks the potassium excretion by blocking the aldosterone in the distal tubule. So in this specific drug class, there's not very many medications in it. So you really just want to remember spironolactone as your primary one they like to use on the NCLEX in your nursing exam. So since it prevents potassium excretion, what is the adverse effect? It's hyperkalemia. So remember that, guys. They really love to ask that question. You'll get a nursing exam and they'll put spironolactone in your nursing scenario. What is the adverse or contraindication? It's a patient with hyperkalemia. All right, the last diuretic is an osmotic diuretic. So these are pretty unique because it directly relates to the loss of water by itself. So this diuretic does not spill electrolytes. So it's an osmotic. So of course, when we remember osmosis is the movement of water. So osmotic meaning movement of water, diuretic, diuresis, so through the kidneys. This is primarily used with patients with cerebral edema. So when we need to remove excess fluid out of the brain. So patients who have a neurological trauma or head injury, we give this medication to prevent increased intracranial pressure. Of course, get rid of that who patient who already has increased intracranial pressure. So the sole medication in this drug class is mannitol. So the mannitol is a sugar that pulls the water out of those cells in the brain and then gets pushed out through the kidneys. So these diuretics can be aggressive as well, so you wanna look out for hypotension and hypovolemia. And if there's hypovolemia, of course, that can cause tachycardia. So of course, your contraindications with this is you don't wanna give this medication to a patient that's already dehydrated and a patient who has heart failure or even renal disease. All right, guys, that sums up the diuretics course. If you guys haven't already, make sure you guys download our free pharmacology concept map on corsetanursing.com. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Hey guys, first of all, thank you so much for watching the video entirely through. It makes our day if we know that nursing school got a little bit easier after watching one of our videos. If you guys like this video, make sure you like it, subscribe to the channel for more, and drop down in the comments for any more ideas that you need help with nursing school. If you want to contact me personally, it's 940-218-4062. Thank you guys for watching, we'll see you in the next video.